just want all of the mansions Football was giving me tension Couldn't go on with the vision So I fell in love with the music connection And baby, you know that I'm winning Boulders is where I'm living Shout out to Chris for the blessing Drinking that legion was heaven Yeah, I'm graduate Kanye West, no gold bay. Play my shit for all my boys And they like, Jay, you gone places 2000 been misbehaving 2019 been elevated Miss 2 I was on the coast I still ball out like Gary Payton The first thing I want to say is Welcome to the podcast, bro Thank you, man. I really appreciate you having me on here. It's uh, it's gonna be fun. Yeah, no doubt. So I discovered you uh from your song "Feel No Way," and then I checked out your discography. Um, I really enjoyed "Sound Room One." I thought it was great. And um, even since we first started talking, you've released other music. Um, the first thing I want to ask you is just let everybody know where you're from and uh how it was in your area growing up. Yeah, uh, I'm from. Mashby Mass, uh, which is part of Cape Cod. And most people, I think, know Cape Cod for being a vacation spot. Like for the summertime, people come down here from all over. And for me, it's been my whole life. I've been living here, um, you know, and I went to school up in UMass. Uh, I was up there for the last four years. I just graduated. So now I'm back down at home for a little bit. And then I'll be moving out to uh, Las Vegas so uh it's been it's been cool down here i mean i had a really good childhood growing up down here had a lot of friends uh high school is great and it's you know really been a, a welcoming community yeah talk about um your childhood growing up um like in your household like what music were you hearing as a kid like when your parents or anyone who was raising you was playing in the house and then what did you start to listen to like when you got control of your own ox cord? So growing up, I really didn't have much of a, a genre I listened to. Uh, I was kind of really listening. I honestly didn't even pay attention to it when I was growing up. I really listened to whatever was on the radio, whatever my parents played in the car. Um, I really remember when I was around like 13 or 14, I started to really hone into like classic rock and really just classic music in general, um, like 70s, 80s rock. Uh, Aerosmith was like my favorite band at the time. I like would watch their music videos and I'd watch interviews and documentaries and all that stuff. And then that branched off into bands like Queen and Led Zeppelin. And I really started to stay in that direction. Um, and that also led into like classic rap like nwa i remember my mom didn't want me listening to them when i was like 14 but i just loved uh i just loved their sound and uh when the movie came out in 2015 i loved that so that really was kind of uh, um like a pillar in my style and what i've always kind of liked and then as i got older um it was always uh like rap and stuff that we listen to today like pop music Maroon five I remember I loved Maroon 5 uh, throughout high school and uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers and bands like that. And then when I got into um, making my own stuff, I really took inspiration from kind of what you hear now. Uh, like Post Malone's my favorite artist. I love him. I listen to him all the time. Drake. Amazing artist. Uh, yeah. I mean, just kind of that blend between rock and rap that yeah. he does very, very well. And I really admire. And it's really been kind of a journey with my whole musical likings from rock and roll to rap to, you know, pop to R and B, just like, I really love everything. I love a taste of everything, but I, I really have a, a sweet spot for, you know, kind of the non-traditional stuff that people would listen to nowadays. Like that's yeah. kind of, I don't know if it's a guilty pleasure, but it's definitely something that I started off. And I think it just kind of grew into more and more of what we listen to today. Yeah, no, I agree with you a hundred percent. Um, How old were you when you started, like when you first had the idea in your head that, oh, maybe I want to start, you know, making my own music. So when I was... A freshman in college at UMass, I got a full ride scholarship to play football up there. Good party and school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I wasn't a big partier in high school. I never really went out. Yeah. Um, so I wasn't even really doing any of that. But I remember I think it was just like probably early first semester. 
uh, I was just kind of sitting there being like, well, what if football, you know, doesn't work out? What if, you know, something happens? What if I, you know, it just things aren't what I planned it to be when I was in high school. And I was thinking to myself, well, I don't want to work a, a, a desk job. I really could not see myself doing that. I really didn't want to do it. So I knew of music and I knew of acting. Those are kind of the two things that popped into my head. Those are the two directions. And I guess music was just the one that, that stuck with me. And I never really had that thought before, but that was kind of the, the starting line for me when thinking about what else would I want to do with my life. And I never really thought that it would be the way it is now because of yeah. where I was back then. But, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that I've, fell in love with what I'm doing now and, and really found what I want to do, you know, making music and also being an engineer and learning that too. That's something that I fell in love doing for my own music. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about that too. I, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, cause I think it's really underrated. Like, cause you know, a lot of people just see like, you know, mainstream artists or like maybe like, you know how drill is so popular nowadays and you just see people kind of hop on a beat but there is a lot more to it like the artistry of making music like engineering producing like that's just as important as like you know what someone says on the track talk about how it was learning to engineer and how how do you think that helps your own music because any person i've talked to that does it with their own music it kind of like you can bring the sound out of your head together more than yeah if you just told someone about it Oh man, dude, engineering for me was like the best thing I could have done for myself. So a little story, a little backstory was my one of my best friends and a kid I a, a kid I went to high school with, uh, he makes music too. And he's kind of like the the reason I got into music. His name's E-Rock. And I've been making music with him since I, he was basically the one that kind of uh, directed me into everything I know now. So huge shout out to him. So when I started making music, it was with him because he'd been making music since he was like in high school. And um, he would engineer and mix and master all of my, all of my stuff. He, he makes his own music. He's a producer. He's an engineer. He does everything. So I didn't know what I was doing. He would always do it. And you know, at that time when I started making music, he was still very new to engineering and he didn't really know everything that he knows now. So the sound wasn't always what I wanted to hear. I knew it could sound better. So I didn't have the money to pay, you know, engineers or pay people up and be like, Hey, can you do this for me? Or go to an actual studio and work in there. I, I didn't have the money and I didn't really have the the time or knew anywhere to go. So I was like, well, I'll just learn it myself. And I, it, to anybody who's out there who wants to start engineering, I only know how to do vocals right now. That's all, I, all I've engineered are my own vocals, but all the, the same things apply to, you know, doing your own vocals or doing somebody else's, everything, it all applies. So I really was, it was an intimidating thing to first start. You know, I really, you know, I had to look up YouTube video, YouTube university. That's what I always say. You know, people, you know, go on YouTube and look up like how to EQ, how to compress, like just learn the basics. And then it's all trial and error. So yeah. as I was doing, you know, my vocals and just practicing, I would just be like, what am I listening for? What am I trying to do? And it, it would just, you know, I would get so frustrated sometimes because I didn't know you know, why it wasn't sounding the way I knew and wanted it to sound. And I remember I kept going and going and going, kept doing it and doing it. And it was really kind of the most consistent thing in my life where no matter, didn't matter if I had a terrible day in the studio working on my own stuff, or if I had a terrible day outside, I always knew that I would go back to the studio the next day and sit down and just continue to do it. And just, you know, I'll watch a YouTube video or something will just click in my head. And I'll just hear it and I'll know what this means and know what to do. And, you know, that's kind of the, the process that's been, I'm still learning, which is something I love about it is I'm continuing to learn every single time I do it. I'm continuing to 
you know, learn something new with a new plugin or learn something from an old plugin and really just taking in as much as I can. And that's what's always going to be kind of the best thing about being an engineer. And something I love about it is you're always learning and there's always something to learn. And there's always a skill that you can hone in from somebody else or something that you can learn from like YouTube or reading something. And I think that's been a big part of my musical journey is, you know, that whole trial and error stage of first learning how to, and then learning so much where you can take those skills and make the sound you want to make or, or get the sound you want, or, you know, you can get with, you know, your voice or your instruments or a whole song in general. Yeah, no, I appreciate you explaining that to people because like, like you said, it is like to learn anything new like that, totally intimidating process. And that's why yeah. most people fail at it too. Like, you know, anything in life, like that's worth doing good. You, it takes a while to learn. And like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I appreciate you telling us that story. Um, So, yeah. so you go from, you know, having the idea to drop music in your head, you, you have a friend that's doing it. So, you know, it's possible. Um. So how do you go from, you know, fucking around like in the studio or like, you know, the ideas in your head to like, when's the jump from like the idea to, to making a song to, okay. Like, cause then you have to have the confidence to drop it publicly. You know what I mean? Everyone you ever yeah. knew. Yeah. It. That's super intimidating too. Yeah, talk about that part. How'd you get the confidence to drop online? And then what was the first kind of reception when you started to drop publicly? Very supportive. You know, I think from you know, high school and college and just people I know, very supportive people. I have a really, really great support group, you know, people who know me, people who may have just heard of me or know of me. And it's super duper intimidating. And I still get intimidated. You know, I haven't dropped, um, you know, recently. Uh, I have a lot of songs that I, I'm still sitting on my phone. And sometimes you get a little bit you know, you're a little bit tense. You're like, Oh, like, I don't know if, you know, what are people are going to think about this? And, you know, it's, it's a self doubt thing that everybody has, you know, you got to have confidence and I'm still searching for that confidence sometimes. And everybody, you know, some people are just kind of naturally confident and some people they have to really work for to, to build that confidence up and being confident with dropping your music is something that is very valuable and a lot of people need to understand that there's like 8 billion people in the world and not every single one of those people are a going to hear your song b then they may not like it or they may like it and c it doesn't even matter you know yeah. and if the thing that i've always lived by with dropping music is if you like it then somebody else is probably going to like it, you know, or if you like it, then put it out there and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I have great songs that I, you know, haven't dropped yet, but I know people are going to like it, but I'm still, you know, sometimes it's still hard. And th then again, that comes also with promoting and, you know, really trying to get the right promotion going and starting that. Um, but there are songs that I dropped in my early, you know, early, as in like a few years ago when I first started that I still don't even like, like if you scroll all the way down on Spotify, it, you'll see um, from the start. And that was a song that was recorded uh, at my buddy Erox place right here in Mashby on his, you know, $50 mic in his bedroom and he mixed and mastered it. And I, you know, at that time, my ear wasn't trained enough to like yeah. hear, like listen back to it now. It's like, oh my God, like everything is just, you know, and he was, he was, he was young and he was brand new to mixing and mastering, you know, my voice. And he was very new into that stage too. But, you know, I wish I could go back and just like delete that song. Cause I just, I wasn't ready to drop it. Honestly, yeah. I was not ready to put it out there. And he kind of pushed me to, and yeah, I mean it, it's 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 there, but the the thing that I like to see when I go back and look at that song to, you know, a song that's out right now, or my like my most recent drop or something that's sitting on my phone is the progress that's been made. Mm -hmm. You know, 
some people get really discouraged when they put out a song and it's not blowing up or it's not getting the results that they want and they're like oh, what like what am i doing like this is stupid you know whatever and they kind of take that too personally and they take that to heart when you know they forget that there's so and i had the same issue too is like you sk- like not every song you put out is going to be the most well renowned song yeah. by people you know yeah, no, and that's I- another thing that that's used with people's confidence too to put out another song and keep going. Yeah, no, I like that you said that because like, and I always tell a lot of underground artists this because I think social media nowadays has people's heads fucked up too. Like, yeah. Like, like people see like an artist right now, like, like that girl, Sexy Red, like, you know, like everyone's like, oh, she came out of nowhere, you know, but like no yeah. one really knows like how much trash shit she might have might have dropped or how long it took her. And also like, there's art like huge artists that like you know like drop for years and no one knew who they were and it just takes one song and also like i always tell underground artists this like you can make money off your music off like a steady thousand to two thousand people like if you have like a actual fan base like even if it's not that big you can make money to survive off of music and also Mm -hmm. i like how you said the you know like you kind of like an over critiquer of your own music sometimes. I think that yeah. a lot of artists have oh, yeah. and like yeah. I know I saw a story like last week of how like SZA didn't like the song her like one of her biggest songs Kill Bill like she was just fucking around and she like wished she she didn't put that on the album because she thinks yeah. like all of her other songs are way like better and she put yeah. way more into it. But that's that's another thing like when you put something out to the public like you could think it's not good and they love it or you think it's good and they don't like it. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's there's a, no, it's there's a subjective no thing. For it. No. And I, I would always think about like post Malone. He's my favorite artist and I admired him so much. And I wanted to have that journey that he had, but I was so naive into music and to thinking yeah. how everything worked when I first started, like drop, like for him, drop white Iverson. And now it's a diamond song. And it's one of his biggest songs. It was the first one he dropped that blew him up. Yeah. I used to listen to that song all the time in high school. I I remember that that specific night when that happened, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, consistency, confidence, and really just, you know, if, if you don't love it and if it's not, you know, what you, what you want to do, then don't do it, you know, but don't let, if you love it, don't let people who, you know, aren't doing it or people who, you know, don't see that success immediately shoot down your confidence and shoot down your ability. Because everybody, I I, I always hate when somebody says you're not going to make it. You know, I always hate when somebody says your song is trash or you your, your skills are trash because, yeah, maybe they're trash right now, but you don't know what's going to happen in the next two three five years they you know can get better yeah you know what's funny about that too i know a lot of trash songs that make it to the radio yeah <laughs> i mean nowadays you know music is yeah. is you know it's sometimes it's most mostly i think a popularity contest now yeah that's what i mean now and, it's not how it used to be so like yeah i mean there are uh, i've come across tons and tons of, of really talented really beautiful artists who you know, just don't get any notoriety or they don't have the right marketing. And um, it's, it's, it's a hard game to really put yourself out there and stand out. And everybody's trying to either follow something that's worked or try and coming up with something new. And some people it's, it's about, it's luck. You know, it's a, it's a good amount of luck. Sometimes, you know, you hear stories of being like, yeah, people who I uh, put this song out and it just bl- blew up overnight. And yep. then you hear songs about, yeah, I put this song out and it took like Lizzo. I think like Truth Hurts, that song, that song came out in. I can't even remember the day it came out, but it was like a long time before 2016, it got yeah. 20, like yeah. four, 2016, 27, like something like and it blew up in like 2019 or 2020. Yeah. 
that song had been out for years before, you know? And sometimes that's what it may be. Yeah, and, and also the, the internet's a weird thing because like you can you can find someone with a huge influence, right? That's just scrolling through yeah. SoundCloud or YouTube, they find your thing, they go on their Twitter, they retweet it, and be like, hey, this shit's dope. Next thing you know, yeah. you have thirty, you know, you have thirty thousand retweets, and then people are call trying to get your information to call it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. The, and the, the internet's a tricky thing. It's there's so much of that I, I've like seen, there's so much that I've heard about like the music industry and you know how you know industry plants and stuff They're like real. that and it, yeah i mean you know i i i i'm not going to speak on any of it cuz i don't know yeah i don't know anybody i don't know you know the 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 truth and the the details that go into it you know it's not my lane so all i know is you know what i'm doing and what i can be doing and you know i'm looking forward to all the opportunities that are coming because the biggest opportunity right now that I'm I'm very very grateful and very very fortunate enough to have is I'm moving to Las Vegas in about ten days a week yeah. something like that Talk about that and yeah so a very very good friend of mine and somebody I played football with at UMass his name's Taylor Edwards DNA Tay he goes by he is out in Vegas and he is an artist an engineer and he does uh music video shoots and I remember I hit him up probably in like March of this year and I asked him like hey is it you know I'm graduating in June is it possible for me to you know come out to Vegas and you know, spend time with you and learn and all this stuff. And he's like, he's just the best dude. He's so genuine. He's so nice. Really, really beautiful human being. He, um, he, he's like, yeah, man, like, of course, I'd love to have you out here. Like me and you are going to be working together and like, you're going to be learning so much. And, you know, he's just given me this opportunity to come out there and, you know, just continue to do what I love. And it's, yeah. it's, a huge jump, not only in music, but in my life, because I'm going yeah. from the East coast to the West coast. Oh, I've done it. You know? I went from New Jersey to Los Angeles. I know. Oh yeah. You're, yeah. You're from yeah. New England. No, yeah, from New right Jersey, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. The, the New England area. Yeah. East coast. Yeah. Yeah. East. So I, I, you know, I, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, but that's what comes with it. And I'm really looking forward to the opportunities that are going to come out there because you never know. The way I'm thinking of it is I don't have any thoughts on it. I'm excited, yeah. but then again, I'm not I'm not really putting my focus towards any specific thing because I don't know what's going to happen. I could go out there and first day shake somebody's hand. I could change my life forever. You know, yeah, I, I just I like have to... I like how you just said that because, and I, I also like the story you just told. I think that's important for people to know because a lot of, a lot of this stuff, this industry stuff, like there's a lot of bullshit that said, but at the end of the day, it, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, exactly. That's what and, it is. You know, the, 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 the thing about, you know, going out to somewhere like Vegas is it's so saturated with so much, you know, fake and it's hard to tell, you know, what's fake and what's real. And, you know, you really have to be aware of yourself and you have to be aware of the things that go on out there. I don't, I don't gamble. I don't know how to gamble. So I always say that cuts That's in cool. half, like as much as I can do out there for, you know, for, for going out and, and, you know, clubbing or going out to casinos and stuff like that. But, you know, I have to remember, <clears throat> excuse me, that, you know, there's a goal in mind. I'm out there for a reason. Yeah. Have fun. Enjoy it. You don't know how long you're going to be out there for, but also know that you're there to, you know, do something great. And you're there to, to, to meet people mm -hmm. and to uh, just open the door to so many more opportunities, opportunities that probably wouldn't arise with being here on Cape Cod. Yeah, no doubt. Um, yeah. Relationships bring opportunities and opportunities bring life-changing events. I, I always say exactly. that. Exactly. I always let everybody yeah. know that. Um, the next thing I want to ask you, bro, I always ask everybody this on the podcast, no matter how famous they are, no matter how underground, 
if you could have three dream features from anybody, any any musicians ever, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh man, see I, the the. I've always had like yeah, you ever have those moments where you like, you know, you're like talking to yourself and you're just like maybe like for me sometimes I have moments where I'm like sitting in an interview and somebody asks me a question like this and I have to like think of the perfect answer to say and now that I'm in that scenario I can't even because there's so many people. Yeah, who would oh, your man. Top three like, do you think? I... And you'd be surprised Green a lot of people features. answer this with people outside of the hip hop genre, which I enjoy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. I, I, because my influences range so much further than hip hop. So it's like I gotta sit here for a second and really think about who. You know, I'll probably have a hip hop or two in there, but I'd have to say. Hmm. All right. Can I do? I know you said three people, but can I make it a band instead yeah, of like an a like band a would be one, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd have to say. I have to say Queen. I would love that's fire. Even though you know, I would love okay. to say Queen because Queen has is probably my favorite band ever, and they've had a huge impact on my love for music and my love for that genre. So I have to say them. Drake, because Drake obvious. has been, yeah. yeah I, I People mean, our age, obvious, yeah. Not for, not for the fact that you know. A feature can bring you so far in music. With, with oh no! Him, just his just because... his influence on art. People yeah, are yeah. a little older. It's it's been a it's yeah I, going over ten years to fifteen now. It's yeah yeah. I've always admired the fact of you know how he's been able to produce so much, so consistent, be so consistent, and just you know so so much greatness from him. We'll see you next um, week though so if he I, continues it. Yeah, yeah. Did you listen to the new single he dropped with SZA yet? Yeah. Yeah, I did too. I um, I it was a long track. It was like five and a half minutes or something like a long track. But I really I think he's it. fallen um, off so the like, last few albums. Yeah, I mean the last few albums have not been. What but he the used definition to put of out. falling off for him is a way different no. definition of falling off for anybody else. I'll tell you that. Yeah, the the fall off for him yeah. is not the fall off for other artists, but yeah, definitely Drake. And then the last one. Oh man. Hmm. This is super tough, man. This is who who has been somebody I was waiting for you to say post. You know what? You know, I would love a post feature, but I won't say him. I will say somebody who I have lo like I've loved their music, even when they were with a group. I loved their music, but I. Right. So let me say this: when they were with this group, I was like 10, 11, 12 years old. So it wasn't you know I was in really? elementary school, so it wasn't the coolest thing to listen to. But I would I'm gonna say Harry Styles. He's dope. A lot of people. No, he's probably, dope. I, I just saw him yeah. sell out the arena out here in Inglewood for like five days in a row and there were people sleeping outside for oh unbelievable in a man we Unbel so I like I said before I loved him when he was in One Direction mm -hmm. I loved Wonder I just I actually just love One Direction I love their music I love the pop music that they put out and I was 10 11 12 so elementary school like yeah. if you if you're a boy and like them like you were laughed at whatever but I, but now as a solo artist from his first self-titled to you know where he's at now. I think he's I've always his, he's, loved. He's, right now he's at he's he's at the top of he, his game still. Yeah, he is just I mean an amazing artist and as a person he's, he's just so, a yeah, very cool. very beautiful human being. He yeah. is just the nicest dude and just to be around that would be super dope and just to see his creative process. Yeah, no of, doubt. You know, making a song and be, you know, having him on a feature with him would be awesome. And I'd love to to do that. And one day, maybe you never know. Yeah, no, for sure. So let, let's get back to you. What do you what do you think is. um, Where do you th see your career one year from today? Hmm. One year from today. Hopefully doing. 
just doing what I love. Yeah. You know, that's a great I answer. I would love to be, I would love to be where my mind projects me to be, but have to adapt to whatever happens. So I would love to just be genuinely happy and doing what I love and just learning, learning and loving. Yeah, you no, I, I love that answer, bro. Um, So for all your fans or anyone who's going to watch this and discover you through this, um, what what's next for you? Like what's coming, what can people expect from you next? A lot more consistency with you know my music and with promotion and with um just trying to be a good influence on people and just trying to you know make people smile make people love music and hopefully uh the music the reason one of the reasons i got into music was the way it made me feel and hopefully my music can do that to other people and make them feel or make them match an emotion they're feeling happy, sad, angry, loving, you know, scared, whatever, you know, hopefully that have a, it just have a positive impact on people. I think those are the best artists, the ones that, you know, even if you just like think in your head right now, if you close your eyes, like you can think of a song that brings you back to a place in time. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like, if I think about That's like my high school do. days, like, I can just picture like Mac Miller's kids playing. You know what I mean? Like it's just like it's you can life. You can't forget it. You can you can hear a song and instantly the moment you hear that song, it can bring you back to wherever you remember hearing it. And that's the beauty of music, man, is it can yeah. it can bring so much emotion out of you. And it is just one of the best things on this planet and one of the most beautiful things on this planet. Yeah, no, I I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, so let everybody know where they could find your music at, and if you just want to spell your artist name out for them, and also yeah. um, if there's anything you want to say before we get out of here, bro, the mic's yours. So, I'm on all platforms: Spotify, Apple Music, and wherever else you may be listening. I'm all there. Um, and the but way I out, spell my spell name it out for them. <clears throat> Is Z A Y V E, but I may I'm thinking about changing it. Not a huge change, but just like small changes. But then again, that's a thought. But I, I, I hey, I want to thank you so much, Tom, for having me on here. I know we had a little mix up for uh, the day before, but I'm glad we got this interview done. I had a, a really awesome time sitting down and talking to you. Um, and you know, I hope everybody listening continues, or if they are thinking about it, do it. Just see how it works. See how you feel. See if you like it or not. And don't give up. Continue to push through. Continue to fight, you know, through life or through relationships or whatever. Continue to fight to find the good. Continue to be optimistic. And, yeah, everybody just, you know, be awesome. Continue to be awesome. Yeah, no, that's a beautiful message, bro. And um, like I said when we started, bro, I want to thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, me personally, bro, I enjoyed your music as soon as I found it. Um, everyone Thank on my you. team thought it was great. Um, it's glad to have you on here, talk to you face to face. And yeah. yeah, like you said, we had a mix up. Sorry about that. I got a pregnant wife right now. So th hey, man, it happens. Good. I completely understand. How long, yeah. how far along is she? She's five and a half months. Oh, really? Do you know if it's yeah. a boy or girl yet? Uh, I think I know, but the reveals next week. So you'll see it. on. Yeah, Instagram. man. Yeah. Hey, you got one of two choices so yeah 